to another episode of the Retro Seller, where in today's episode we will be covering yet another Chinese handheld console, this one being the FC3000 Family Pocket. This one in particular is version 2, but there's more than just two versions. There was an earlier version that played only Famicom games and one, believe it or not, that actually played the cartridges. Um, version one of these is similar, uh, comes in two colors, red and gray. The Famicom only one, I believe, was orange, actually, or ish. Um, but version one is essentially the same, but it has, like, two gigs of memory, where this one has 16. Uh, I think version one has, like, eight emulators. This one has 10. It plays Neo Geo. CPS-1, Super Famicom, Mega Drive, Famicom, Game Boy Color, Game Boy, Sega Master System, uh, Sega Game Gear, as well as the Sega SG-1000, believe it or not. Uh, this one has a 3-inch LCD screen. It's not IPS, unfortunately, but the viewing angles aren't bad. You'll actually get to look at it. Uh, it has a 4-3 aspect ratio which is 320 by 240 pixels. Has a 1800 milliamp battery, 3.7 volts, rechargeable. Uh, you can also, I'll show this to you later, play it with, uh, I believe, double or triple A batteries. Uh, it's a nice option, but really the rechargeable is all you really need. You can find this thing all over the place. I know they say that about a lot of things that I get, but this one's literally everywhere. Besides, like, Ally Express, the usual, like, Banggood, Amazon, DH Gate, uh, even Walmart, of all places, uh, has a listing on their uh, website where you can get it. Or if you do a Google search, you'll find it everywhere, anywhere from $20 to $40. This one, I believe, I got for $23.49. Uh, which was like twenty nine thirty seven with shipping. But uh, uh, I'm surprised at this thing. Like I said, I saw it everywhere and uh, uh, didn't know what to expect from it. But it's a very interesting device. Uh, but what we'll do is we'll look at it, uh, show you a couple little quirky things about it, try to explain some other uh, issues that this may have. I think you're actually going to like this. I Again, I was surprised. So why don't we do like a little unboxing of this thing and take a look at the games that it has on it. This one has about 5,000 games on it. Version 1, I think, is like 2,000 games on it. There is a load of games on it. I was looking through this thing for the longest time and haven't even touched on what are actually here. And there's some really good games on it. Some repeats. Uh, some are like the American version, Japanese version. But not many repeats, but there's a ton of games on it. So, let's have a look at it. Okay, here we have the box for the FC3000 Family Pocket. And as you can see, it's a uh, pretty decent quality. Nice thick box with some nice metallic lettering on the front. But uh, other than that, there's really not much on it as far as specs or anything. But that's the box, so why don't we open it. And as you can see, here is the console, which we'll set this off to the side and take a closer look at it after we see what's in the box. Here is the manual, which it's a nice glossy manual, but pretty much like all the Chinese handhelds, it doesn't go into great detail as far as functions or things that you could do with it. It's the basic stuff. Uh... Something, oh, I should have mentioned it doesn't show it here, but some of these um, consoles come with a controller so you could play it as a two-player system and you can, can actually can connect this uh, with the audio video out and play it on your TV. Uh, I did not do that and really don't care to look at these on the TV because I prefer it as it is probably the quality on your TV wouldn't be all that great anyway. So let's look underneath here. Nice little smiley face. And what do we get here? The uh, AV out cable. Nothing special. 
a lanyard if you want to carry it around like a camera or something. I don't know. You have the USB micro cable. No brick to charge it, but there you have it. Uh, you have a nice little bag loaded with fuzz on it from China. I guess that's a nice little feature. And then this is something interesting. This is actually a cartridge that you can play like some kind of homebrew type games on it. And I will show you that, which is like a, an odd feature on this, but it's, it's nice, I guess. Okay, so here we have the console itself. Uh, before we really talk about uh, the layout of this and look at the games, I want to talk about the build quality of it. It's an unusual design, and when I saw uh, pictures on it, line of it when I was researching it and other reviews, it seemed really cheap. Now, it's not the best build quality as far as, as, far as the quality of the plastic is concerned. You know, it's cheap plastic. But it's got a little bit more heft to it than I thought. If there's a downside to the design, it's this little ridge around here that seems kind of unnecessary. Uh, and it has like a hollow feel to it. But it's not bad. Uh, I was surprised by it when I actually held it in my hand. But those ridges are odd. So now let's look at it. Uh, has the... Uh, D-pad is not bad. It's a, a little on the mushy side, but it is very responsive. And when playing it, I didn't notice any lag or anything like that. The buttons are also a little mushy, but again, not bad. Uh, you have to consider, again, that this is like a $23 item. And you can't expect the kind of quality like you would get in a Ambernick RG351 you know, system. So uh, I'm kind of judging it on the value of it as well. Um, so what else do you have? You have a select button, a start button. There is a menu button up here, which is interesting. Uh, really helps with the navigation of it. So when you're going in and out of games, you want to go back to the main menu. You just hit that and you're, you're back. Uh, you can also save and load games from this hitting this button. I'll show you that when we get into it. Uh, there is the power button right there. Your volume rocker is here. And up here, you have your left and right trigger buttons. Now, they're are basically an oddball. <laughs> because not too many games on this system require to think maybe the couple of CPS1 games, maybe like Street Fighter would actually use them, but you wouldn't really use them uh, on most of the other games. But that being said, where they are is kind of odd. Uh, it would be better if they were kind of here, but they're buried in the middle of the ridge, so when you're playing it, you know, they're in a really weird spot. Fortunately, you don't really need them for much of anything. So... Let's look over another uh, interesting feature of this. We're actually going to look at this cartridge first. Um, and we'll look in the back side of this thing, which you do have to open for certain things. So here's what you have when you look in the back of this. First of all, here's the cartridge slot where you would put this in, which we'll pop it in. Um, there's like, hundred, like I said, 130... It says uh, FC games, you would think Famicom games, but they're more or less homebrew stuff. Nothing special, but nevertheless, it's interesting. And you can't switch back and forth between this and the onboard games, which are actually on an SD card. Um, so in, in order to switch back and forth between the 5,000 games that I have on here, you have to remove this. Uh, but let's look underneath at the battery, which... As I said, is a 1800 milliamp battery. 
Some of these systems do not actually have this, which is the SD card right here. Some of them have the games soldered on a chip directly onto the motherboard. So essentially you can add uh, your own ROMs to this thing and probably update the firmware. So this is a much better version. So why don't we put the battery back in and then uh, turn it on and show you some more interesting things about it. Okay, so why don't we fire this bad boy up. Still with the cartridge inserted. And here we have, it says game card. We have games like uh, F22. There's nothing special, as I said. These aren't, as far as I know, actual Famicom games, but homebrew stuff. See, the sound is pretty good on it. Not, not a bad game. But when we have 5,000 games on the SD card, we're not going to mess around on this thing. I don't think uh, anybody's really going to play these games, even for fun. Alright, so this is just reading off of the SD card, and you can see the main menu, which is actually a really nice menu. <coughs> I was surprised at this. It's Again, it's a $20 item, and it has a really good menu. So as you can see here, it has uh, Neo Geo, uh, CPS-1, Super Famicom, Mega Drive, Famicom, Game Boy Color, Game Boy, Sega Master System, Game Gear by Sega, and Sega SG-1000. And uh, let's look at some Neo Geo games. We're not going to really delve into most of the games, just give you an idea what some of them look like. There's far too many. We could be here for hours. As you see, look at that awesome menu for the systems. And there's loads of games on there. This particular version has 92 games on here for Neo Geo. So let's just quick look at Metal Slug. We'll do like one or two games from each system. This game is pretty much on every one of these friendly systems. And as you can see, it's Running very well. There's no screen tearing. Sound may be a little loud. Let's turn that down. No screen tearing. Seems to be running at the normal frame rate, which is impressive. You're welcome, buddy. Now again, when you want to get back to the main menu, you hit that menu button. It brings you to this, which allows you to save games, to load them. Or to quit to go back to the main menu, which is what we're doing. So why don't we swing over to CPS1 and see what they have in here. They have 32 of these games. Let's see what would be a good one to play. So here we have 1941 on CPS1. And like a lot of these systems, because of the vertical aspect ratio the game is turned on its side and i believe there is no way on this system to flip it which would actually make it very small to see on this three inch screen so <laughs> why don't we try to play it like this it, uh, it is really awkward to do that maybe you can It's not comfortable. Looks good though. One thing we gotta say about the screen, the viewing angles, if you turn it to the side, you can't see it all that great, it kinda washes out. 
when you look at it straight on, it's very vibrant with the colors. It's bright. Looking at it straight on, you couldn't really tell the difference between this and an IPS screen. It's that impressive. Just hard to play it like that. Okay, so we moved over to uh, Super Famicom. I guess I should mention one other thing. Uh, if you look here, there's a 1,456 Super Famicom games, and they are not in alphabetical order. And there is also no search function, so if you want to look for your favorite game, you can have a bit of scrolling to do to find it. Uh, there's no favorites list either, so you're kind of at the uh, whim of the menu. Plays great, no lag. Here we are on the Mega Drive now, and there are 943 games on this system. Now, here's something I just wanted to point this out. Uh, this is a game, a pinball game that I, I love. This game is one of my favorite video pinball games called Dragon's Fury, Devil's Crush on the TurboGrafx-16 or PC Engine, which would be amazing if that emulator was on here. Unfortunately, it's not, but this is the this version of it, and underneath it is a game that I didn't know existed, which is Dragon's Revenge, which is apparently a sequel to Dragon's Fury that I had no idea existed. Sounds great, looks great. I don't know if I like this as much as Devil's Crush or Dragon's Fury. So now we'll look into Famicom. There are 994 of these games. Trying to get the hang of this. I can tell you it's kind of garbage as far as what you're supposed to do. He stays off to the left like that. Control his movement. He just walks. He just lift his head up, lower it, shoot fireballs out of his mouth. Oh, That's a garbage game. Let's see how to play it.
looks pretty good. Sounds pretty good. So that should wrap up our quick review of the FC3000 Family Pocket Handheld Game System. Uh, in conclusion, it is a great system. Uh, if you already have something like an Ambernick RG351 or any other systems in that vein or better, are you going to need this? No, absolutely not. If you have a kid who's into retro gaming, they're going to like it. Uh, you're not going to bust the bank if they bust the system. So for that reason, I recommend it. It's also not complicated. You can't configure it like you can uh, even a BitBoy or the uh, RG351 or systems like that. So it's uncomplicated. But that's actually a positive. Great menu, great list of games. It stays in its wheelhouse. It doesn't try to fool you into thinking it could play PlayStation 1 or N64 and the emulators it has on it functions just well. I haven't seen anything, uh, anything glitchy with the audio or the uh, visuals on it. So I highly recommend this thing, especially if you're a collector. You're going to love this thing. And uh, it's become one of my new favorites. So anyway, that ought to do it. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And there's uh, plenty more to come in the future. Thanks for watching.